Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Bant Duplomancy. What is going on, everybody, and a happy Monday to all of you. I hope you guys are having a great start to your week. I will be coming home today from my anniversary trip, so if I, uh, well, hopefully this goes out on the right day, and hopefully we don't miss any days. So uh, I'm really excited for today's deck because it's a deck that I have been facing quite often on the ladder but I had a hard time finding kind of the original deck list, so I don't know if the original creator is the one that I have found this with, but the Scar TV, uh, fellow content creator, kind of around the same channel size as us as well. First time I'm hearing of you, but thank you so much for putting this deck together and throwing it over on Aether Hub. I really do appreciate it. I made one small change to this, which was solely lands. Uh, I wanted to make sure that we could hit all three colors of lands in my initial kind of playtesting through the deck. Uh, that was was kind of a fault that I found where I and again keeping in mind this uh, handful of games only so uh, not necessarily a fair test but I was finding myself struggling to get the colors of mana that I needed all the time uh, and while I don't like the idea of having too many tapped lands which I'm sure is why these were not initially included uh, it does seem to be really important to be able to hit those colors. While the deck is mostly blue, uh, there are some really key cards that we'll talk about as we go through that really want all three. So uh, to, to kind of go top down on this, the idea here is that you will cast a handful of creatures that all benefit from being targeted with just a single target card. Some of those cards might be Homestead Courage. Uh, we might have things like Slip Out the Back, Shore Up, Combat Research. Uh, just tons of these kind of one-ofs that really target a single creature and then capitalizing on that with things like Vesuvian Duplomancy. This is one of the bigger cards in the deck, obviously, kind of the namesake card. Whenever you cast a spell that targets only a single artifact or creature you control, create a, to a token. Wow, that is a copy of that artifact or creature, except it isn't legendary. Uh, what's nice about this is obviously we we want to do that and capitalize on a lot of the things like the, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? Storm Chaser Drake, there we go. Uh, so whenever this becomes the target of a spell, you draw a card, which hopefully will draw you into another uh, spell that targets, which allows you to do it again, and you just continuously get tons of these little tokens. Uh, now we obviously are playing multiple cards a turn in this deck, generally speaking, so Ledger Strider is at an all-time high here. Ivy is another really nice card in this deck, so whenever a player casts a spell that targets only a single creature other than Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief, you can copy that spell and that copy actually targets Ivy. So uh, ideally we can actually double up on a lot of these little spells as well that way. Uh, some big capitalization opportunities with Ill Illuminator Virtuoso. Uh, we've got a lot of protection as well with Cradle of Safety as a one of. We've got that interaction with Make Disappear. Uh, we've got Fading Hope. We have got Slip Out the Back, Shore Up, and Tamiyo Safekeeping, along with March of Swirling Mist and Slip Out the Back. So all of these are kind of helping us get to where we want to be. One thing I will note about this deck, there are a lot of two ofs. I think there might be some avenue of maybe trimming down on the different cards that we have and instead kind of running uh, a little more streamlined of a deck to try and get these down to like consistent four ofs in some of these slots. Uh, in particular, things like combat research feels like a good one. Uh, but again, this is all just to start us off with this deck. And again, the Scar TV, thank you so much, my friend. Really do appreciate it. Guys, let's jump right in. Let's see how we do with this one. I'm anticipating a few issues, but I think it's going to be a really fun list, and if we can get it working, it'll be a blast. So, let's see what we can do. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one, and wow, what an interesting start. Uh, generally, I think we have to throw this back. It's a little tricky, right? Because technically we can try. I'm trying it, man. This is not a good keep. 100%. Uh, but we are on the play, which just means we might be able to get this Delver down. And then if we get like another blue source, we can protect it next turn. Looks like we are going to be facing another Delver deck. That should be interesting. All right, let's go ahead and throw a Delver of our own out. Unfortunately, did not draw a land. Not super exciting there. But again, this is this is a bit of a calculated risk, we'll call it. <laughs> uh, we'll have to decline, sadly. Um, do we Fading Hope just to get the Scry? I think we do. Uh, and then theoretically this gets countered, so that's fine too. Uh, I'm being overly aggressive here because we literally need that Scry. This was such a bad keep. Why did I keep a one lander? Why do I do things? Why do I even try? Um, all right, yep, there it is. 
Uh, do we trade Del or attempt to trade Delvers? I actually will. I don't think they'll take it. Yeah, I didn't think so. That's what I was calling the bluff a little bit there. I didn't think they would take it. Okay, they did not get an instant or sorcery off the top, which is interesting, but they still have lands. We do not, uh, which is unfortunate, but everything's fine. Land. Uh, okay, I mean, I'll take it from the standpoint of we do actually get a stronger attack in here, so that is helpful. Uh, we also do have, like, Spell Pierce. We've got, you know, some, some ways of protecting this, so basically we're just gonna have to hope we go all the way. Uh, with specifically this. We could have Spell Pierced this. I think it's more, more apt for us to protect the Aberration here, uh, so I'm not gonna worry about that. <laughs> Uh, I do expect they'll flip this eventually, but so far they have not had much luck. Uh, unfortunately, though, they have gotten a lot of lands, so we'll see. Uh, not super optimistic here. Ivy, I would love to play Ivy. Um, sure. Gonna take the damage. Not much we can do. Um, let's see if... Are they actually gonna do anything? Nope. Okay. Land! Haha! -ha! We will surely win now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wish. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and attack in. Uh, and the question now is, do we even play anything? I honestly don't think so. Um, I, I think we just keep protecting as best we can. I fully expect they will flip Delver this turn, though. Uh, they get the uh, consider off here, and we'll see what they got. No, they still don't. Wow, they are very unlucky on their uh, Delver here. That's that's amazing, <laughs> honestly. Never expected that. All right. Jin, huh? Sure. That's fine. Not overly concerned about that, actually. Um, obviously, it's not great for us, but we can fight through that, so that's fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> now what? Not 100% sure. Um, I mean, we're probably just gonna die right like there's not a whole lot we can do um what we could do is try and force the issue by attacking here um you know what i'm gonna try i think our uh our little delver probably is gonna end up dying here but i think that's fine all right let's do this see if this actually works <laughs> really doubt it uh we do have a spell pierce here though so we do have a little bit of protection yep uh so that's the only reason i was okay doing this is at least we actually <laughs> trade these um but this is this is certainly not ideal uh and they may have another counter spell wow they do okay fair enough um well we're burning counters so that's helpful we're, they still haven't flipped Delver. How have they still not flipped Delver? They have so many lands. They must be just getting absolutely flooded. Like, that's all this can be. Um, but they do have a handful of cards in hand. There's the Telerian Terror. Uh, and truthfully, yeah, at this point, like, there's there's not a lot we can do. We just don't have lands. I'm going to go ahead and concede here. That was 100% my fault. I should not have kept. But I wanted to try it. So now we did. We can just cross that off the list and never do it again. Let's jump into game two. This month's Patreon Rewards features the amazing tutor pack with some of the most powerful tutors in Magic's history. If you'd like to learn more or sign up today, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two, and this is definitely a better hand, albeit we do not have a turn one Delver, but I think that's fine. Uh, we'll see what the opponent might be up to. It looks like Burn, uh, which is going to be a bit of an annoying matchup at the very least. Uh, I think we'll just throw the blue source out here. Um, yeah, that's fine. Cool. Okay. All right, so kind of curious to see how this goes. This could be an interesting one. Uh, definitely don't love this matchup in general. Like, they're gonna have a lot faster creatures, if that makes sense. So, it's just gonna be a little bit tricky for us, but we'll see what we can do. Um, I think we just end up taking this, actually. Alright. Duplomancy, huh? Interesting. Alright. Um, 
I don't love doing this because we can't protect the Storm Chaser Drake, and that Drake in particular is a really crucial card for us, but I think we're gonna have to just run this out uh, and see what they do. I'm sure they will attack first. No, they won't. Uh, just a word of advice. Anytime you're in that position, like the mono red player could have just attacked first to see if we even block. Uh, that would have, would have, I believe, been a better play from the standpoint of uh, at least they know like kind of what we have and all that stuff like we could have tried to block and then they would have just had the free burn spell anyway so I don't know it feels like that's a better play um, but just my opinion that's all yep um, fortunately I have to pay the one here but we at least protect Ivy not great, I know, but it's something. Um, and she is now a 3-2, so that's helpful. We're really not doing so great, is the takeaway. Um, I don't think we played... Wow. They didn't do anything. That was interesting. Um, I don't know why they didn't attack. Maybe they didn't realize they could? Let's go ahead and shore up. Seems easy enough. Um, do we attack in? Um, hmm. I'm gonna say no, only from the standpoint of we kind of like we literally need to to be able to block here at least kill something, and we do have that cradle of safety which will allow us to do it. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm not overly optimistic about our chances here either, but. They seem very protective of their creatures, which is kind of interesting. I don't know that they need to be necessarily, but that's fine. So we we will move to blocks and probably block, uh, what's the best ones? This will be a, what, 4-3? Yeah, I think it'll be the etching. Okay, cool. Uh, interesting, very interesting. So let's make sure we go to blocks. I'm gonna enter full control just so we don't straight die. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right, cool. Unfortunately, I do have to, yeah, there we go, cool. Easy kill on the 2-2, two -two, which is at least something. Um, and now we do just have a, a nice little 4-3 here. All right, um, I'm gonna throw out this and pass, I suppose. So we can March of Swirling Mist both of these in a scenario where we need to, uh, which is quite helpful. They're going to etching, sure. They're also stuck on mana. We're not doing great on the mana front. This Vesuvian Duplomancy is a little stranded, but um, we at least have something going for us. Okay, they didn't do anything. Um, I will definitely reveal that. That's excellent. Um, I mean, we do need to start chipping away here at some point. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and attack with just the uh, the Aberration here and we'll pass. Have, leaving up this Make Disappear is actually quite nice. Kind of curious to see how they decide. Maybe it would have been better to attack here, but uh, we'll see. I'm gonna counter this little guy. I just kind of don't want them to have it. Uh, and we do still get to leave up the March here, so that's kind of nice. Uh, they are not attacking. I'm so amazed that they're not attacking right now, to be honest. Uh, I think we go for the Diplomancy play and then pass. Uh, so here's the trick. If we attack in, they very easily can just kill us because they are getting a free creature this turn and they do have a handful of cards. So I think the safest bet is for us to just drop this pass, be able to block as needed, but then theoretically be able to... Ooh. Um, well, unfortunately, we can't do anything about that, which sucks, but that's fine. All right, so maybe it was a bad call to play the Diplomancy. Maybe we should have just marched. Uh, we literally, like, have to block this. Okay. Give me a creature. That is a creature. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, that, I mean, we're not out of the woods. They could just have like a play with fire and we're dead, but technically we do have an out here. <laughs> um, so we, 
or no, technically, I guess we don't, do we? Ah, this is a weird game. This is such a strange game. All right. Do they attack? They do. All right, so let's full control. Let's make sure we're doing this properly. Let's go here. I don't know if this works or not, but we're going to try it. All right, sick. It did. That was helpful. Uh, land sucks, though. Um, so we sandbag it, I suppose, and then hope for the best. Oh, <laughs> uh, land was the worst possible draw. We just needed any, like, spell, really, and we would have been at least okay there, but they definitely have us. I'm gonna go ahead and good game him and concede. That was just unfortunate. Let's go ahead and jump into a game three. Maybe, maybe we can get a win. Uh, we do need to clean up our plays a little bit. We're not doing the best, so let's see if we can do a little better in game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Let's see what we can make happen. I will keep this. Uh, the Ledger Shredder is quite nice here, uh, and we do have kind of our mana sorted. A land draw there is not great, though. We don't need more than four lands in any real major capacity. Uh, I think I'm actually just going to wait. I kind of want to Fading Hope this uh, or be able to protect the Ledger Shredder after we play it. So I'm kind of curious to see what they do here. I'm going to go ahead and Fading Hope here. And if they have a spell, they'll probably counter or do something along those lines because they will have added value. But they did not, which is great. I will keep the Virtuoso. I think that's quite a good drop here. Uh, and they didn't play anything, so I'm assuming they do have a counter. I'm going to go ahead and try this and expecting that they will counter this, but oh, no. Interesting. Uh, they could just have a kill spell here. Either way is fine. We actually have ways to protect, uh, so not really overly concerned. Uh, they would have to have two kill spells, basically, to be able to actually take out the Virtuoso. Um, and if they can't, they just can't, so that's great. Awesome. Uh, pass. Do we go for this just so we can get the extra attack? Uh, or excuse me, this I guess would be the better one and then we can do this. I'm actually gonna do this. I don't think this is necessarily a great idea, <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna try it. Um, ugh, I don't want to get rid of either of those, but it's fine, okay. Yep. Yep, yep. I will go ahead and play our Ledger Shredder. This is actually a big problem for us because obviously the goal of our deck is to uh, to to draw a lot. <laughs> um, and we kind of don't want to do that now that they've got a Shieldred in place. So this might be a little odd. Uh, and truthfully, we're just not doing so great, but that's fine. All right, so they actually do kind of want to trigger our own. Ooh. I think we actually get rid of the combat research. I don't think we want it. Uh, cool. Yep. Yep. I want to leave up the duplomancy for a number of reasons here, but just getting extra stuff seems somewhat helpful. But they're going to start taking down quite a bit of life here. So... All right, what's the best option for us? So we can double block. Um, is that good enough? Uh, I don't think we do. Um, so the reason being they can kill both of those, I believe. So it doesn't seem super worth it. Let's do this. Let's drop the diplomancy. And we will pass now. Ooh, what a tricky place to be. Okay, so if we can get Shieldred off the field, I will feel a lot better. Not anticipating that being super easy to do, though. Whenever you draw a card, target. Ugh, that sucks. I'm doing this now, by the way, because um, I kind of want to see what we draw. That sucks. All right. Yep. They did not block, though. Interesting. I don't know what to do, guys. We're just drawing terribly. Make this appear really is not good for us. Uh, they're going to be able to s just 
completely drain us, even with the uh, this alone. Like, even if we get rid of Shieldred, this isn't good. And they can force us to draw extra here. Whoops. So we will do this just to counter the thing at the very least, but... Yep. Yep. They're going to draw twice... So now all they have to do is draw one more card, basically, and we lose? Is that correct? Or do we just lose anyway? No, that was it. Okay. And they just attack. Yep. I mean, honestly, there was nothing we could have done. I'm just not going to block. That sucks, man. Um, that really, really sucks. I was hoping we would get one. Uh, let's try one more quick game. Let's give it one more shot. I want to see if we can get a win. All right, guys, here we are for our definitely last game, uh, and we'll give this a shot. <clears throat> we do have the lands we need to kind of play everything in the hand. Would love to get one more land just so we can kind of spell pierce or do something to protect a little bit here, uh, but we'll do the best we can. Uh, really unfortunate. I'm, again, wondering if the consistency is a problem. I know my play pattern is a problem, so I'm for sure assuming that we could do better there. Uh... Let's see, do we want to go, let's see. Um, I'll just go Drake. Um, I like the Illuminator Virtuoso against the Evolve Sleeper because this does eventually get Death Touch and I'm not super into the idea of letting the, uh, this, this has double strike so it can first strike around it basically is the takeaway. <clears throat> yep, not super surprising, that's fine, all right. Um, so we definitely Virtuoso here and pass. So this leaves up Spell Pierce and then ideally next turn we've got quite a bit we can do. So we'll see. Um, they may also just kind of go for it. Hmm, do we care about this actually? Uh, whenever a creature you control dies. No, I don't think we do. As much as I don't want this to be on the field, I really don't want them to be able to kill the Virtuoso. That's more important to me. Uh, and so that felt better. Yeah, okay. Let's do this first. Uh, we will throw back you. Uh, and I will throw this out there. So again, we get to leave up the spell pierce here. Um, I'm actually gonna get rid of Ivy. I don't know that that's correct, but I wanna be able to leave up a lot of these, these counter spells. Uh, let's see if they actually block. They may not. All right, cool. And we get to draw extra cards off of this. Uh, this is part of why uh, the Illuminator Virtuoso is such a good card for this deck is that you get double attacks in with that double. So like, deals damage twice, which just means you're drawing cards twice. Uh, and this is great, so we do get to counter the Shieldred before it even comes down. They don't have mana left, uh, and so there we go. We got the win. All right, at least we got one. That was the goal. Uh, so I am happy with that. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. All right, guys, so first and foremost, again, Scar TV, thank you so much, my friend. I really do appreciate you posting this list over on Aetherhub, and it is a fun list. I think my thoughts are, um, first of all, I do think mana was a little bit easier from the standpoint of color, excuse me, was not as big of an issue this time around when I was initially practicing, it was. I, I, that could have just been luck. Like, let me be very clear. We may have just had bad draws in those practice games prior to, uh, but as I was learning that, that the deck, that just kind of seemed to be an issue. So I am happy we had the Bantlands in there because I do feel like that was helpful. Uh, secondarily, I feel like it's hard to draw the cards you want when you've got so many two ofs in the list. Uh, and I, I don't know, because I say that a lot of them are like repeat effects. So what I mean by that is like Tamiya's safekeeping as well as Shore Up are both kind of hexproof givers. So the idea is basically the same uh, to be able to give yourself that little bit of, you know, that protection, so to speak. Uh, and so they're very similar in that regard. It's just you kind of get two different versions of it. It might be that you don't even need, like, maybe that smooths out the mana to take out Tamiya's safekeeping and just use Shore Up instead. Uh, might be a suggestion, but again, I don't know if that's helpful or not. I I also just feel like a lot of the, like, Delver, as an example, was a two of as well. Like, if we want to go heavy on Delver, I feel like you probably want to go full 
full delver for the most part. Um, I know it's not the mainstay creature in the deck. I would say like the Virtuoso, the Ivies, uh, and the Drakes are probably like the heavy hitters of the deck. But just to have a turn one play where you can throw that combat research on there is really, really helpful for the rest of the deck to operate the way you want. Uh, and so I would, I would be really interested at least just to play around with that configuration a little bit. All that to say, the idea behind the deck is phenomenal. I love this idea. I love getting Duplomancy down, and we did kind of get to do it where we copied an IV. Uh, I would love to get that going like a little bit more reliably. So I think there might be a way to make that happen. I'd be curious to see what everybody's thoughts are on this and Scar TV, yours as well. Uh, I do really appreciate everybody though being so supportive of this one and Scar TV again, sharing out this awesome list. So thank you so much. Uh, guys, thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great start to your week. I will be getting back today as I mentioned from my anniversary trip. Uh, so hopefully I'll see your comments and everything like that, but I love you guys very much. I will see you tomorrow.